All right, let's go ahead and talk about the superficial back. So let's go ahead and start with the axial skeleton, which is divided into cervical, thoracic, and lumbar segments. Uh, one of the palpable landmarks to note is C7, uh, which is the bottom of the cervical chain. Obviously there are seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic, and five lumbar, and as well, uh, we can talk about the sacrum and coccyx. Uh, taking this and rotating at 90 degrees, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, curves of the back. So the primary curvature is scoliotic. Uh, in utero, when we're developing, we're not very big. Think about it, we're mostly curled over. So that's why your scoliotic curve is generally your hunched over curve. Uh, and then your secondary curvature is your lordotic curvature. Uh, in relation to the back, let's go ahead and talk about the scapula. Um, just as an easy uh, reference point, just think of the center of this dividing line right here as the, the uh, axial skeleton in regards to this scapula right here. So when discussing the features of the scapula, you have your medial border right here. You have the lateral border right here, which is also then seen on the anterior view right here. You have the superior angle, the coronoid process, and your acromion. Your chromium is an extension of the spine of the scapula, which again is one of the very palpable landmarks, the back. Uh, infraspinatus fossa, uh, below the spine, supraspinatus, uh, supraspinous, pardon me, supraspinous fossa um, above the spine, which would make sense. Uh, the supraglenoid notch, which is in relation to the shoulder joint itself, and we'll talk about uh, that in a moment. Uh, the inferior angle, and then back here, the subscapular fossa. And again, that'll come into play uh, later on. Uh, for the superficial back, one of the important things is to discuss anastomoses. Uh, Anna, uh, discussing with, and stoma meaning mouth, so with mouths, uh, which allows for multiple uh, vasculature feedings of, art of arteries to a particular target. So the three big anastomoses for the scapula, which will be important, will be the dorsal scapular artery, the suprascapular artery, and the circumflex scapular artery, which these will feed the muscles in the area, and if one were to become uh, blocked for some reason, then one of the other arteries could then take over. So moving on and actually adding some musculature to the discussion, uh, on the left side of this patient here, we'll just say that this is a trapezius uh, and then reflect that to discuss all of the muscles that are slightly deeper to that. Uh, so starting from the top, we have the splenius muscle, uh, then we have the levator scapulae and the rhomboid minor and major. In many patients, these are mostly indistinguishable. Uh, the minor and major are important in shoulder retraction, the levator scapulae as it would uh, only be reasonable to assume would be to elevate the scapula. The spine of the scapula right here, this is the scapula obviously and this is the spine. Uh, the supraspinatus is above the scapula so it sits in the supra uh, spinous fossa uh, and then the infraspinatus sits in the infra uh, spinous fossa uh, and then you have the teres minor and teres major and the latissimus dorsi. So, moving on to the rotator cuff, taking a couple of these and moving over here, you have the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and then again, if you think about that uh, scapula, like a cup, on the other side of the cup, you'll have the subscapularis muscle, uh, and all of those are important for stabilizing the shoulder joint and for movement of the arm. So the infraspinatus and teres minor will do abduction of the arm uh, at the elbow, the uh, subscapularis will do adduction of the arm at the elbow, and the supraspinatus will do abduction of the arm at the shoulder. Uh, discussing dermatomes, which are important in this section, we have dorsal and ventral rami, which will uh, feed different parts of the uh, innervation to the skin. Uh, the dorsal ramus will innervate the dorsal aspect of the skin, and the ventral ramus will innervate much of the lateral and then ventral aspect of the skin, which then allows us to be able to have dermatomes. And we know these dermatomes because we can identify pathologies based upon numbness or uh, other nervous abnormalities. 
Uh, one other thing to note in the area, um, this right here is the, uh, the spine of the vertebra, of the transverse process, and that ends up defining apaxial versus hypaxial. So apaxial is dorsal to that transverse uh, process septum, and hypaxial is ventral to that uh, transverse process septum. And that's important because that defines uh, trunk muscles, true trunk muscles, uh, versus limb muscles. That'll do it for the superficial back.